Welcome to our third and final day of our three-day um, ACLU Prison ACLU Unit Treatment Lesson. Today we're going to talk about unit therapy, but first, as we always do, we're going to review what we learned yesterday. Day two, remember we talked about a prison ACLU. That means they're the same, they're equal to each other. And remember that we talked about several different ways that we could use to prove that ACLs are equivalent, equivalent to each other. First way was to use a model. So here we have a model. We have two question marks before exclamation point. Two to four is equivalent to one question mark for every two excla exclamation points. We can use cross multiplication. And if the top products are equal, that means the ACLs are equivalent. We can also use cross multiplication to find missing numbers. And we can use tables and ordered pairs. Remember we have three graphs, um, ordered pairs. The x to y ratio is equivalent if they are linear. They lie on a straight line. Rate the ratios that compare different units of measure. So you'll see in our few examples, we have 90 miles per two hours. Miles and hours are different units. In the second example, we have $60 per three ounces. So we're comparing dollars and ounces, which are also different units. It's Rady the Math Cat, that cat who's great with rates. Meow. Hmm. How much does this fish cost? Hmm, <gasps> fish. The fish costs three dollars per pound. That's six dollars for every two pounds. Uh, thanks, Rady. Turn off the shower. You're wasting water. Okay. He's right. Water flows through that shower head at three gallons per minute. You've been showering for ten minutes. That's 30 gallons of water down the drain. Get out of the shower. <gasps> You're eating one apple per person. Five apples, five people. Ten dollars per lawn mow at five lawns in the neighborhood. That's 50 bucks. <laughs> Four commercials per commercial break. Meow. Half a gallon of milk per week? That's one gallon of milk every two weeks. Two hours of gameplay per day? That's 14 hours per week. <laughs> Only three windows clean per hour? Oh man, we still have a hundred miles to go. We'll get there soon. I'm driving 50. <laughs> You're not going 50, you're going 50 miles per hour. That means you'll go 100 miles in two hours. Is that your cat? It's Rady, the math cat. Ooh. One mile marker per mile. We have two hours in the car with him. Maybe I'll kick it up to 70. Yeah. It's Rady, the math cat, that cat who's great with rates. Meow. A unit rate is finding one of something. So a unit rate is a rate in which the second measurement or amount is one unit. So from our previous example, remember we had 90 miles per two hours. 
If we wanted to find the unit rate, we would want to know how far we could go in one hour, which would be 45 miles. Remember our previous example, we had $60 per three ounces. So for one ounce, that would cost us $20. So let's see how we find the unit rate. In order to find the unit rate, we have to get the one of the units to be with one. So here's an example. If we're trying to figure out miles per gallon, we have a car that can drive 540 miles on 18 gallons of gas. So our ratio would be 540 miles and 18 gallons to 18 gallons. So miles and gallons are our two units of measure. In order to find how far the car could go on one gallon, we would divide the top and the bottom by 18, and we would get 30 miles to one gallon of gas. So if you ever hear your parents talking about, I get 28 miles to the gallon, that's how they figure that out. We can also find unit price. We do this in the exact same way. So the first thing we would do is to write a rate for the two units that we want to compare. For example, Mr. Willison is going to spend $252 to stay three nights at the Opry Lane Hotel. At that rate, how much will he spend for seven nights? So we need to figure out what rate he is paying to stay one night. So we're going to find the unit rate, $252 for three nights is equal to $84 for one night. So the unit rate is $84 per night. Then we can determine how much he's paying for seven nights by taking the unit rate for one night, which is $84, and multiplying it by the number of nights that he wants to stay. So to stay for a week, it would cost him $588. The speed formula can help you find your constant rate, or let's say how fast you were traveling, um, or the average speed that you were traveling during your trip. So to find this rate, we have a ratio of distance over time. There are three problems at the bottom of the page that can be solved by using this formula, by substituting in numbers for whatever they stand for in the formula. For example, a bicyclist, a bicyclist travels 60 kilometers in three and a half hours. What's the cyclist's average speed? So 60 kilometers would be their distance, three and a half hours would be their time, and when we divide those two, we could figure out what their constant rate was. How fast were they going every hour? Another example would how much time would it take for the sound of thunder to travel 1,500 meters if sound travels at a speed of 330 meters per second? Another example, a snail can move approximately 3 tenths of a meter per minute. How many meters can a snail cover in 15 minutes? So for this one, it's a little tricky because we know the rate that he's traveling and we know the time that he's traveling and we would have to figure out what the distance is. Here's a practice question. Tanya lost 15 miles on a one day track in 30 minutes. What was Tanya's average speed in life per minute? So we need to use the speed formula. So remember the formula is rate equals distance over time. So in the problem it gave us that she lost 15 miles in 30 minutes. So her average speed for Tanya's rate was one lap every two minutes that she walked. So as we come to the end of this lesson, you have an excellent trip. I hope that you, that you remember all of the things that we've tried to take away the last three days about ratios 
og så var jeg i 4. klasse var i hjem og ikke. Jo ikke helt så glad, så jeg kigger også forbi disse seks sætter hjerte, hvor jeg kapte tomater fast, en bad pack af tomater puree. Number one, how many cups of tomato sauce are there for every cup of water? So we're looking for the ratio of tomato sauce to water, and we want to know how many cups of tomato sauce are there for each one cup of water. Number two, we're looking at unit price. So four cans of tomato sauce cost $2. What is the unit price for one can of tomato sauce? Good luck.